Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 51. I'm having issues with the lighting again. I gotta change up my setup because it's really glary. That's alright. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. Um, it's episode 51, I already said that. This is a, a few days late just because of life, but it's here now. So, <laughs> Also, Jesse's running around somewhere playing, so he might make an appearance or two. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and hop in <laughs> to it. You will probably hear also toddler noise in the background. Fix that little. It's so glary, but it's just because I have to move my craft room around a little bit. Anyways, I got a ton of stuff piled up here. You just It's just barely out of the frame, so you can't see it, but it's literally a pile of stuff. And um, I've got a finished object. I've got two almost completely finished objects, and then I got some whips and I've got a few things I want to talk about and one thing I want to show you the random one thing I want to show you I didn't make it my mom made it for me let's see she made it in hey Chug did you eat your candy <laughs> she made it for me it's a blanket she made it for me in 2006 so I was 16 and I just I found it while I was cleaning out some boxes and I thought I'd show you guys. It's a, just a double crochet and it is made with Red Heart Super Saver. I know it's black and I think it's cherry red. And it survived almost, well, let's see here, 10, 11, 12 years, right? Watch out, boo. It's pretty big. Oh gosh, I can't even get it all in there. It is a big red and black striped blanket and it's got tassels. Uh, excuse me, that's mama's chair. <laughs> Stinker. That's you, what's <laughs> I had to get another chair. But yeah, I found this in storage. Uh, I was going through some closets and I was like, I have it. My mom made it for me. I'm going to get out and use it. So now it's a couch blanket. And Kat, the girl, baby, said she really likes it. Get it, Molly. Hold on, he wants more candy. Here you go. A pathetic. <laughs> All right. I just thought that was neat, and I wanted to show you guys. But it is just double crochet back and forth, and then she put tassels on the end. She used to always put tassels on every blanket she made. She just really liked tassels. She made all of us kids one, and I think all the grandkids up to the more recent ones. She made Jesse a little one, but she kind of doesn't really crochet anymore or knit, so. I have it put up. It is put in his special box, but uh, she used to make big giant ones for everybody. I know for sure. Mine was red and black. My sister's is Gryffindor colors, I think. So it's red and gold. And I think my brother's was um, black and yellowy gold, kind of like Hufflepuff or something like that. Or maybe his was based off of our family crest. I can't remember. Jesse, don't leave that. Don't mess with it. Jesse's messing with that, the lighting's probably crazy. But all right, let's just hop on into the stuff I've done. I technically, I technically have two finished objects, just one. Jesse, honey, leave the blind alone. You gonna break it again? Uh, one of them is all the way finished, and one, the main part is finished, but I still have to make another part to it. So it's not 100% finished, but this part of it is. If that makes sense. I'll talk about the completely finished one first. Where's my notes? And it is, where is it? I got a lot of notes today. It is called the Thanksgiving Turkey Amigurumi. It's a free pattern by Kara Gunza. It'll be linked below. I don't think I said that right. I made it with a G hook and it's all Red Heart Super Saver colors. This is for our county fair for uh, Thanksgiving decoration. <laughs> it's a turkey. And what it is, is it's five granny squares uh, sewn together in such a way to make his turkey feathers and he's just a little turkey <laughs> but it's uh, Red Heart Super Saver actually this may be with love I think this is Red Heart with love chocolate uh, this is cherry red and gold and back here is I think carrot and cafe latte in the back but yeah, I just picked out some autumn -y colors and made a little turkey just as a decoration. Last year, um, I don't think I made a Thanksgiving decoration. I made a Halloween decoration and it was a little ghost. I'll pop a picture of him if I can remember. Uh, and he won first place, so I'm hoping this little turkey will win. Gobble, gobble, gobble. 
and it's adorable. My sister came right after I finished it and she wants one. And I told her I'd make her one right after the fair, but right now I'm in full force fair mode. It's a lot of elves. Yeah, I think he's super cute and super fast. I made him in like under two hours while watching TV one night. Super. The worst part was weaving in all the ends from the different colors on the granny squares. <laughs> but I got it done and he's got a cute little turkey now. And I will definitely use this in my house after the fair is over. He would even be cute on a reef. But, um, yeah, cute. Alright, my next... This is the almost completely finished object. He's playing with cars. <laughs> but uh, this is for... My mom's got invited to another uh, baby shower. So, um, the dad actually used to work with him. But he's a hunter. His name's actually Hunter, too. But, um, they're having a baby girl, I believe. So, I made this blanket, and it's going to be a lovey. I just got to make the amigurumi head to put on it. And it's going to be a little deer head. But this is the blanket. It's made with Red Heart Super Saver Camouflage. Or I think it's called Camo. And the border is a really bright orange. It's from I Love This yarn. It's just called orange. But it's like a really ready orange. Really bright. But this is the same little baby blanket pattern. That I always go to. For baby blankets and loveys. What? I recently made a... a hair. Leave it alone. That's a Yeah, it's a box. You need to leave it alone though. Got cat stuff in it. Um, I made a I recently made a baby lovey for another baby shower she went to that was Harry Potter themed, and I'll pop a picture here too. And it's the like same exact baby blanket, just different colors. Uh, I love this blanket pattern because it's super quick and easy. And once you get past like the fourth row, it's the same thing over and over. You just increase each round. So it's it's pretty. I made Jesse a baby blanket like this when he was little, and we used it, but it was the full size one. Uh, why don't you go play in the living room no then it wouldn't be annoying <laughs> but yeah i do plan on finding i haven't found an actual amigurumi head i want to use yet i found a few so i'm just trying to find a cute one to stick on the top of this uh because it's, it's baby item but also themed for something for the dad that he enjoys Super quick. Again, this I made this little lovey in like an hour, maybe two hours, one day while watching TV. And the blanket pattern that I used for this, do I have it right now? Yeah, right here. It's called the Rainbow Ripple Baby Blanket by Celeste Young. I used an H hook and I done said the yarns, but this is a super quick pattern. It is a PDF download, so and it's free. So I would suggest grabbing it if you want a quick baby blanket that makes good loveys. You see the, the details in there? It's really pretty. And it just it's, you make it any size you want. You know, you can keep going to make it huge. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's in there. It's in the bowl. Alright. This next item is almost a finished object. Um, I've got all the crocheted bits done except one. And then I just have to get a reef uh, form. And then I can sew it all together and it'll be done. And it is a wreath <laughs> for the fair also. And it's a Halloween themed one. And um, I've crocheted all of this that I'm about to show you in one day. <laughs> in like four-ish hours on and off working. You know, in between doing stuff with Jesse. And I think I actually stopped to make dinner. But And then one part of it that I'll be sewing onto it, I made last year. But our fair, they do it from September last year to the end of August this year is the time frame that you can make the stuff. And this I made in October last year, so it lines up. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. My phone started dying, so I had to hook it up. Everything's interrupting me today, but that's all right. Um, like I said, it's the Halloween Bat Wreath by Sarah Zimmerman, which is the owner of Repeat Craft Me. She has all kinds of awesome patterns that I've done most of them. Well, not most of them, but a, a lot of them. Uh, I, for the, I think for all of it. Oh, I forgot the, no, I didn't. It's right there. For all of it, I did use the H hook and rehearse for several yarns. So I'll just show you. I'll start with the base of the reef. Ah, I'm dropping pieces. The base of the reef, I, got, I left a long tail so I could sew it on, is very fluorescent y. It is Heart Super Saver Glow Warm. And it will be what I put around the reef form and sew, you know, so it'll be rounded off. Kind of like a little scarf right now. But I got that ready. And then on top of the reef is going to be a little bat. So this is his body. 
He's got ears. And I gave him green eyes because I thought it would match the reef form. And his little wings. These I will sew on once I put him on the reef because I got to get some pop cleaners out of my stash and hot glue on here to give them structure. Orange? Right? You want an orange? Oh, okay. <laughs> but here's his little wings. Did you want an orange? Is that what you said, baby? And then separately from that pattern, I wanted to make something hanging down from it. Last year, I made a Grinch-themed reef, which I believe was hers also. I can't really remember. Leave it on, baby. And I wanted something hanging down from it just to give it, make it bigger and give it more detail. So I made a heart hanging from that. And so this one, I wanted to make something Halloween-themed. So I made two little candy corns, which are so cute, I think. Um... And I'm planning on making one more. This is the last thing I have to crochet. I want to make one more of these because I'm going to hang on my like different Look levels. Mama. Look, Mama. Yeah, it's Mama up there. Mama's filming. Say hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> you want to go play with that? You can. You can play with them. Mama don't care. And those little candy corns is called Candy Clops by Gleeful Things. It's a free pattern. Uh, the pattern actually has like an eyeball on it and face cool because it's like a cyclops. I got yeah. you. Yeah, you got them. But I just wanted the body, the candy corn. And I used the H-hook on that also. And Red Heart Super Saver. Can Mama see one just for a minute? No, that. Oh, fine. <laughs> Red Heart Super Saver White, Pumpkin, and Bright Yellow. And for the bat, it was just black. <laughs> and uh, the last thing I'm going to add to the reef for just more, you know, Halloween decorations is Sid the Spider. Some of y'all might remember him from last year. I had him hanging under my TV, and I made him, I tested him for Lucy Coates. Um, she has a YouTube channel too. I don't think she's been active for a while, but she wrote this pattern and it's free on Ravelry and it's called Sid the Spider by Lucy Coates and it is Red Heart Super Saver Amethyst and this orange is not Red Heart Super Saver. This is that random orange that I bought at a local yard store. I've talked about it a lot because I had a bunch of it and this is a bunch of it. <laughs> I can't remember what it was called, but he's a cute little spider. I'm going to put the bat up in like one corner of the reef and he's going to be hanging out in the bottom corner. And then the candy corns are going to be hanging below. And then, yeah. I think that'd be cute. <laughs> Let's move all of these guys somewhere. We'll put them back up there. Sorry. <laughs> and he took off of my candy corns. I remember to get those later. But yeah, I'm looking forward to building that reef. And there are there is a Christmas one and a Valentine's Day one and a Thanksgiving one. I would like to get done before the fair. But I don't think I'm going to have the time. Okay, I got his cartoon started for him now. It uh, paused or whatever. Yeah, so that's the reef. And then, like I said, there are three more reefs I'd like to do before the fair, but I don't think I'm going to have time to. Uh, that one only took a little while, but I don't have the reform. So if I could get myself to go to the store and buy the reforms, I could probably pop those reefs out very quickly. But uh, it's just a matter of me doing it. <laughs> but okay, the next whip I think is right here in front of me, right? I'll do the Mandala Madness last because it's the big one. Alright, I'll go ahead and talk about my Halloween Granny Square blanket. It is the Halloween Granny, Granny Square blanket by Maria's Blue Crown. It's a crochet along that's going on right now. Uh, I made G hook with G hook and it's all Red Heart Super Saver and Mainstays yarn. Excuse me. Uh, let's see here. There's been three, there's four weeks out right now. And I'm still on week three. I uh, didn't finish week three before week four came out, which was Saturday. But um, I'll catch up. So, so far I have eight purple squares. That light really shows all the holes. <laughs> but um, I got eight purple green squares. And then I have, this week I did finish four gray ones. These This is Mainstays. Uh, Medium heather gray and the purple is Red Heart Super Saver Amethyst. I haven't woven in the ends on these yet. And then I did finish one green one. <laughs> this is Red Heart Glow Worm. I gotta make seven of these and four more gray and then four little appliques of uh, Frankenstein's head. What else did I gotta make? I can't remember what came out last week. It was ghosts, and then witches, and then something, and then Frankenstein. I can't remember what the other one is. But 
the other ones that I can't remember, I have to look it up, will be on here. Oh, it's skeletons, the skeleton face. It's just a white circle with eyes on it. Uh, kind of like Jack Skellington for these ones. There you go. And then my ghosts. Where's my other ghost? There it is. I have four little ghosts. Squares. That are done. And then my little witches. I love the little witches. <laughs> and uh, so I got to do... I got to make seven more green squares... Four more gray squares, and then I gotta make four skeleton faces and four um, Frankenstein-like faces, or Frankenstein's monsters face. And then I'll be caught up with that. And that's actually really quick because these squares are super duper fast to make. Uh, it's just like how many rows? Let me get one. It doesn't have something on it. One, two, three, four, five rows, and it's super simple. I, I, um, the only reason I didn't finish it this week is because when the weekend hit, uh, we were running around doing stuff like we always do on the weekends. So I didn't really crochet hardly at all this weekend except a little bit on my mandala madness. But yeah, I'm really liking that and I can't wait to finish that. I'm glad that it's going to be finished before Halloween so that I can have it on my couch for Halloween. And, uh, maybe even take it with us if it's chilly because last year on Halloween here it was a little chilly and rainy. So we could use it in the car over the kids or something in between stops. Huh. Second to last whip is my Magikarp hat. This is, I posted on my Facebook group. This is a kind of a oops pattern, but I'm going to go with it anyways. One thing that I have learned in the past, but I guess I forgot, <laughs> and that I want to help, hopefully remind everybody else of, is when you're working on a pattern, there are two main terminologies that are used. And there's the US terminology and the UK terminology. I know there are others obviously, but those are the main ones that most of the patterns are in because um yeah, I don't know why. Because of English speaking, I guess. And this hat, I downloaded the pattern and I started working on it and I finished the entire hat and was working on the applique details before I realized I was using the wrong terminology. <laughs> I was using US terminology and it was, it's written in UK terminology. So all the double crochets that I was making should have been single crochets. However, it doesn't really affect the hat. All it does is make it slightly bigger, but the hat does fit my head. It's just really slouchy, which is okay because it's a magic carp hat. It's supposed to be a big floppy fish on your head. Um, I noticed it when I was making the fins because the fins turned out way huger than the ones in the picture. And I knew something was up, and that's when I went back in and <laughs> realized that I had messed up. But, like I said, for this particular pattern, it doesn't really matter that uh, I used the wrong terminology because it's not like a piece of, like a garment that would affect the size big time to where it wouldn't fit. So, I'm not going to rip it back, definitely. I'm just going to keep going, and it'll just be extra floppy, which I'm okay with because I like floppy hats, anyways. But, like I said, I did finish the hat. This is the fish hat. <laughs> this would be his body. It is closed off and I left the tail because I have to sew up the circle and I um, might use that to sew on the fin. But, see it's still going to be a big floppy fish hat. I think it's fun. And um, I did make his two, I think those are called pectoral fins. This is when I realized that they were way bigger. But they're just going to be... in this general area somewhere flopping around which is fine I don't mind and then I made his eyes I made the, the white of his eyes and the pupils I did change the size of these just so that they wouldn't be crazy big because if I had followed the written out pattern the way I had been going they would have turned out humongous so they'll be up there like that so now all I have left to do on him is make two yellow I forget what they're called, barbels or something like that. They're like little stringy things. And then I gotta make a big yellow fin that goes up here and a smaller one that goes down here and then his tail fin. And his tail fin is gonna be big. It's kind of something like if these two were together, something like that. It'll be on the very back back here. And then I'll be done. So I'm, this will probably be done before my next video comes out, which is cool because I'll probably be wearing it. <laughs> and also the next Pokemon Community Day is this coming weekend, I believe it's August, where I live, it's August 3rd, which is Saturday. And I don't care if it's August, I'm going to be wearing this while walking around our city, our neighboring city, 
Pokemoning because it's cool. I told Devin that I need to make up a bunch of these to take with us on those days in case anyone wants to buy one. <laughs> and after I finish this Magikarp one, I have to make Devin a Pikachu one. There's a Pikachu hat in the game. It doesn't look like a regular Pikachu. It's like a washed out pale yellow Pikachu with like a crazy confused face on it. And I'm going to be doing that for him. I've, I've already got the yard pulled out. I just got to get working on it. There isn't a pattern for that one, so I'm going to have to piece together other patterns and then come up with my own little Amigurumi um, facial features. But that'll be super easy. Amigurumi, not Amigurumi, applique. Applique facial features. Um, I think it'll be easy. I ain't worried about it. It'll, be, it'll take a lot less time than this hat because, excuse me, this hat's so big. I'd probably done be done with this hat if I had been paying attention to the terminology. So always, always, always read and reread your pattern before you start it and make sure you're using the right terminology. But like I said, with stuff like this, it's not a big deal. The big, the things that it would be a big deal is if you were making an amigurumi, which I've actually done that before. Last year I started an amigurumi with U.S. terminology and U.K. So it was written in U.K. and I was doing it U.S. So I messed it up, but I noticed that really early on and fixed it. And um, But yeah, it would only affect amigurumis really bad and garments, which this is neither, so it's all right. Oh, project bag, I threw it over there. I don't know why I threw it over there. <laughs> but yeah, this hat will be done next week and maybe even have the Pikachu one started. He's been off quiet now. Let's move these gray squares. I got my big old drink sitting where it goes. Honey, stay organized. <laughs> All right, my last whip to talk about is my Mandala Madness. And I'm so close to being done with it. I only have 25 more rounds to complete until it's done. I know I will be done before the fair because I did the calculations. And as long as I finish 0.7th of a round a day <laughs> between now and the end of August, I will be done. And I've been averaging two rounds a day, so I'll probably be done with this a lot sooner than that, obviously. I'm going to try to work on it. I mostly work on this at nighttime when Jesse's starting to calm down and be, you know, get ready to go to bed. I sit on the couch and work on this because it's too big to have out during the day when Jesse's gone crazy. So I usually work on my littler things during the day and this big blanket at night. And it is attached to yarn, so I have to make sure I don't pull out any stitches. <laughs> I will try to do that. Get a big old loop pulled up. <laughs> All right. Oh, so big. It's so big and heavy already. There's the middle of it. Can't even get it all in the picture. I have to back up a lot. <laughs> kinda <laughs> and it's so pretty I think I just love all the colors and I love the flow of the colors I don't know and I really like that the white is getting used more up here because in the first few rows wow, down here there wasn't a lot of white and now the white is these big textured rounds and it's just really cool looking it pops out really well I think especially against the purple the amethyst oh gosh but it is heavy already and it's not done I have used an entire skein of every color. A drink, a drink, a drink. All right, hold on. All right, <laughs> got him a drink. What was I saying? I have used an entire skein of every color on there, and I'm I'm about halfway through with the second skein of white, which is actually more white than I thought I would use, which is fine. But I think I have enough to finish, and um. Let's see here. I'm almost out of purple. That would be two whole skeins because the, the amethyst I was using was one of those jumbo skeins. So it's like two skeins together. I'm almost out of that. So that would be two skeins. Let's see here. And I think green. I don't know. I'm keeping track of it so that I can tell you all for sure once I get it done about how much yarn I used. Uh, and in worsted weight with a G hook because the pattern is meant to be and smaller yarn I believe I think it's a size 3 but I wanted it bigger and plus I wanted to use yarn for my stash I have only had to buy three skeins of yarn for this so far the rest of them have been in my stash but if I run out of amethyst I will have to buy some more of that because I do have another big jumbo skein of amethyst up here but it's for my Halloween blanket and so I, I would buy another jumbo one probably because I do use that color a lot for other things uh, I 
think it's all of that, yeah. And the Mandala Madness is a free pattern uh, by Helen Shrimpton. And like I said, I use a G-Hook and Red Heart Super Saver. All of it's Red Heart Super Saver, but the white. It's, um, the white is all of this yarn white. <laughs> and the Red Heart Super Saver Red Hot or Hot Red, I always forget. Uh, pumpkin, bright yellow, spring green, blue, and amethyst. I think that's the colors. <laughs> But yeah, that's all of my whips and my foes and my F H F O S. Is that what they're called? Half finished objects. I think it's all the stuff like that. <laughs> all right, so now I got a few more notes here just for um, reminders. Reminder number one is the Cakewalk Cal is still going on. It's going strong. I'm co-hosting it with Cat with Cal with Mo from Unseen Strands. I'll link her below. Uh, all of the cakewalk information will be below. She's hosting it on her Ravelry group. I'm hosting it on my Facebook group. If you're interested in joining that, just hop over to one of those or both of them and submit your finished objects in the albums there. And you, the, basic, the basics of it is to use any caked yarns, including yarns you've caked yourself. It's basically a stash buster. Uh, to make anything and <laughs> try to win prizes. It, it has started in April and it's going to end October 14th So you still have a lot of time to make some more objects for it. There are a lot of participants um, I've been on both the Ravelry group and the Facebook group looking at everybody's photos and there's a lot of them So it's going to be really cool to see who all wins um, The next reminder reminder number two is I am still uh, You still have a few more days to enter my pattern giveaway it I'll link the video up there uh, it is on my last Knit Crate video, which is July's Knit Crate. I am giving away $10 worth of Ravelry patterns. It's your choice. Whoever wins can pick up, pick out as many patterns as they can squeeze $10 out of um, worth of patterns to get. So I will be, that'll be closing Tuesday, the last day of July. That's Tuesday, right? Yeah. Uh, so you got one more day, and I will be drawing the winner Wednesday or Thursday, depending on how busy I am. But you will be contact. Well, I'll probably I'll post it on a video, and then you can contact me whoever wins. Um, and you can have as much time as you want to find your patterns. You know, let me know that you've seen that you won, and then go look for patterns. I don't care if it takes you a month to find them; I'll still get them for you. Uh, the third reminder is over on the Facebook group. We are almost to 500 members. Last time I looked, we were like. 487 I think so once we hit that 500 mark we will be having another pattern giveaway up to five US dollars so um, if you're not a member of the Facebook group go ahead and hop over there it'll be linked below and you could also try to win a five dollar pattern and the last <laughs> um, I got a few up here let me grab them the last reminder is on Wednesday August 1st I will be updating my Etsy shop with a bunch of new uh, drawstring bags and zipper pouches, hopefully. Uh, I've already got two zipper pouches made and I've got a bunch cut out. I'm hoping to make them today and tomorrow. Oh, I need a drink, I'm talking a lot. Uh, so I will be also starting August 1st through the 30th of August. Is that how many days are in August? Um, I'll be having a sale in my Etsy shop. Everything in the whole shop and all the new ads that I will add later this month will be 20% off the whole month of August so all bags notion pouches and stitch markers are going to be 20% off all of August starting August 1st and like these are some bags these are almost done just to turn one I just gotta put the drawstrings in them this is a patchwork one and then I got two Snoopy bags <laughs> I just gotta put the drawstrings in these and I've got six or seven more right below you uh, that I gotta sew the drawstring casings on and then they'll be ready to post so I gotta finish all these bags up in the next day and a half to get them up in the shop on Wednesday morning so if you're interested in any of my bags go check it out on Wednesday morning and you can get a discount on them and yeah I guess that's about all the reminders I want to turn the light off hold on I think that's everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop off here and edit this. It's a little bit longer than most of my videos have been lately, which is good, I guess. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will answer them as quickly as I can. I also got a whole list here of videos I'm gonna be filming soon, including some more Ravelry tutorials. I had one filmed, but it somehow got 
uh, corrupted the footage did and I couldn't edit it. It wouldn't let me edit it. So uh, I have to refilm that one. And it was the one about posting in groups, <laughs> which a lot of people have been asking me about. But um, I will try to get that out as soon as possible whenever I get a chance to film <laughs> without a little boy being a butthead. <laughs> but I'm going to hop off here and get this edited, edited and up and I'll see you guys in the next video. And I'll also talk to you on the Facebook group because I'm active on there pretty good. And I think it's everything. Bye, guys.